Hi, it's good to be back with you. This is our second in a series of attempts to reach out and share some of God's love and his, um, his assurances in these times, these troubled times that we are facing. It's hard to predict, of course, from day to day what our situation will be, but presently here in California, we're in a self-quarantine, self-isolation, lockdown environment. Very few stores are open, essential businesses, gas stations, grocery stores, etc. And these kinds of times can be sort of cabin fever and at times a little bit depressing and wondering what's going on in the world. So in this attempt to reach out, we want to encourage you with things that never change. The faithfulness of God, His Word, His promises toward you. And the one I wanted to focus on today is one that's commonly known to a lot of people, but I'm not sure that we think about it all that much or perhaps that deeply. There are at least two places that come to mind in the Scripture. One is in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy. One is in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews. And these words are very simple but very powerful, where God himself says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Now, I think all of us at times have wondered, where is God? Has he forgotten me? Has he forgotten my address? Does he know where I am? Does he hear the cries of my heart? One of my favorite Psalms says that our cry comes to his very ears and he moves heaven and earth on our behalf. And that's really the truth. When he says, I, he's bringing the full power of his personhood to bear. Remember, I is I am, the great I am, a God who has no beginning and no end, a God who is omnipresent, a God who is omniscient, a God who has expressed his love to us through the cross and through the gift of the Holy Spirit to us. He is saying, I I, God, will never leave you or forsake you. He doesn't say, sometimes I will, but I'll come back. He says, I'll never leave you. I will never leave you. You know, it's an interesting thing about young children. When young children, uh, less than a year old, say, are, are playing, and they're with one of the parents, if that parent leaves the room, they do not have the capacity to know that that parent will be back. Sometimes they wonder, my gosh, he or she is gone, and will they come back? And it's a genuine wonderment. They, they don't have enough in their arsenal of information to know that mommy or daddy uh, just left them, and they'll be back in a few minutes. But we as Christians do know from experience that when God says something, he means it. When he says, I will never leave you or forsake you, Forsake is even deeper than being left. Forsake was a word that Jesus used on the cross when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's turned your back on me, not even looking at me. And he felt that disconnect. But be encouraged today that no matter what's happening, if you're at home or you're working from home or you're even unemployed or many things that have happened to us through these difficult times, that God himself, the creator of all that is, seen and unseen, he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. That is a tremendous comforting word. I recently received a text from a former celebrant, a friend, who is presently in the military. And he was trying to express to me where this came home for him, where this was real for him. He's in the last phase of his training prior to being uh, shipped out to some international assignment. And the final phase was called survival training, survival training. And in the process of it, he was asked to go out or ordered to go out into the wilderness, as he described it, which was very cold. It was in the Pacific Northwest. It was a cold environment, and he was to survive, which I assume meant finding his own food and shelter and all of that sort of thing. Well, as part of the training, he was uh, captured, which was a, uh, a play-acted thing. It was something where um, it was planned that he would be captured and put into a sort of POW situation. He was isolated in a small, 
cold space. And he even expressed that there were some light beatings and interrogation, all of that, prepping him for, of course, that if ever in his military service, he would be captured. Well, he wrote to me after that, or he sent a text after that, and he said, I want to tell you that my time with celebrants, a lot of the things that I learned with celebrants about Jesus being my rock, my all in all, my provision, they held true during that time of isolation. And I was not forsaken. He said, I kept letting the words of the songs, the celebrant songs, go over in my mind and in my heart. And he said, I found him to be faithful. I thought, along the continuum, not quite sure where you'd be in your heart with this, maybe you're quite relaxed, not worried much at all. Maybe you're lightly worried. Maybe you're somewhat worried. Maybe you're facing uh, difficulties that are more profound than, than others are. But wherever you are on the continuum, I would think that that friend would be way out on the continuum because he felt alone, he felt isolated, and he felt out of control. And he truly was. But he said that God proved himself mighty and strong in that environment, and he felt his presence. In essence, I will never leave you or forsake you. Well, some years ago, another celebrant named Andrea Glenn, wonderful young woman from California's Bay Area, wrote a song called Never Forsake You. So appropriate to drive home the truth for you today, that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, that you are God has made a promise to you, I will never leave you or forsake you. Take a listen to this song by our dear friend, Andrea Glenn. Together, together, 
Isn't that a beautiful piece of truth? Something on which we can rely, something on which to which we can cling. A person who says, and he is God, he's not a man that he should lie. When he says, I will never forsake you, you're not alone. I'm right there with you, he means it. Let's pray together. And whatever it is you're facing today, let's lay it at the feet of Jesus. Father, we come to you and we thank you and praise you for your word. We thank you for your promises which say that you, with all your power, all your strength, all your grace, all your provision, will never leave us or forsake us. And now, dear friend, I pray for you today that whatever it is you're facing, whether it's physical illness, whether it's sorrow in your heart, whether it's tending toward depression or anxiety, whatever it may be, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may you receive the ministrations of the Holy Spirit right now. Spirit of the living God, be close to our friends right now, to our friends. Bless them, hold them, keep them in this day. And we thank you for never forsaking us. We praise you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friend, let us hear from you. We'd like to hear from you one way or another, either by a note in the mail or an email, or give us a phone call. We'd like to hear what's happening in your life during these times. The only way we can lose is to be divided from each other and be conquered. We should not be alone. We all need encouragement. And if, for example, you would like to have some of these songs on a celebrant CD, simply make the request. And for a period of time here, we will send it to you at no charge. We'll send it to you at no charge. So it'd be a blessing into your life. So God bless you. We hope to see you next time. And may the Lord keep you. And remember, he will never forsake you.